Greetings, Zero here, and welcome to Pokemon Pure Green, a ROM hack of blue version. So, no, don't adjust your settings, that is indeed what they did with this. Um, so, anyway, this hack is one of the best I've ever played, period. It mostly preserves the feel of the Gen 1 games while making some various quality of life improvements, some rebalancing to make some Pokemon more viable through the course of the game, and give them all better move pools. So, what's the theme of this run? Well, it's quite simple. We're only going to use green Pokémon. That is to say, Pokémon with green sprites in the game. Um, which would be all of them if I was to use the default settings, but we're not going to do that. I'll explain later. Um, so... Actually, I should probably show you this first. Uh, settings... So, you can set your tech speed. Battle animations, we're gonna go with set, which is what we've done with the other runs. And we're going to adjust the color scheme. Now you can have the originals, or you can have Super Game Boy, there's two different color palettes for that. Or a yellow version, we're gonna go with the Super Game Boy palettes, which is what you'd see if you played on a Game Boy Color, or a Super Game Boy, or the built-in emulator in Pokemon Stadium. We want alternate Pokemon colors on, otherwise we would be stuck with only grass types and bug types, and even then only some of them. We're gonna set music to OG+, which adds a little bit of extra. It adds some extra music tracks, and I believe adds some more to the normal music. Audio pan, that's just stereo. Uh, bike song, we're going to turn that off. I haven't noticed this making a difference, so we're not going to touch that. So, here you can see if you want to have the original red, blue, green, or red, blue, yellow type advantages, or if you want to have the post-gen 1 differences, we're going to have the post-gen 1 changes. We're going to have the experience bar. We're going to set NPC effort values to on, so that they're a little tougher, but we're also going to give them power points, so that way they can't just use Recover to stall me out. Now here's what's interesting. Another interesting feature is you can set the sprites to use either the originals, or the Space World 97 sprites, which was the Alpha for Gold version. I believe it used a modified version of the red, blue, and green engine for it. So, yeah, we're going to have the Space World's sprites, but also you can choose whether you want to have the red or blue, red or green, or yellow version sprites of certain species. Um, I'm going to take a look at a comparison sheet real quick and see which ones I want to use. Okay, so these are the sprites I decided on. We're going to keep red and blue for Bulbasaur and Squirtle. Blastoise is going to use red and green. Butterfree and Pidgeot are going to use red and blue. Pidgeot set to red and green. Raticate to red and blue. Vitorino is going to use his red and blue sprite. Golbat's going to use the yellow version sprite. Mankey, Arcanine, Abra, and Kadabra are going to use the red and green sprite. Machop is going to use red and blue. Tentacruel's going to use red and green. Graveler and Cloyster are going to use red and blue. Gengar is going to use the yellow version sprite. Onyx and Voltarb are going to use the red and green version sprites. Execute's going to use the yellow version sprite, and so is Exeggutor. Coughing and is going to use the red and green sprite. Sarvi's going to use red and blue. Pinsir's going to use red and green. Electabuzz is going to use red and blue. Zapdos, red and green. And Mewtwo, red and blue. Anyways, I think we're done tweaking the settings for now, so uh, let's get started. Also note that, yes, this is the most recent version of the hack as of today, which is... When I'm recording it, it's early in the morning on April 19th, 2024. Yes, I do record a lot of my content in advance. So, uh... It's just to ensure that if I get busy, you guys still have something to watch. Okay, so, uh... Well, this is gonna be the green team, so we're green. Nah, these are all boring. I can think of a much better name for you. Look, we all did this at some point in our Pokemon careers. Don't judge me. This is why they took away your ability to name the rivals, by the way. It's because people kept doing this shit in the first two generations. Anyways, we start off in our room. And, well, first of all, I want to show you something. See this? I'm holding down B. Yeah, it adds running shoes. So, first things first, let's get our obligatory potion and go downstairs to talk to Mom. Oh, also, yeah, this is a Super Nintendo, which was... Well, at the time that development on this began, that was the newest Nintendo console because... 
if I recall correctly, Ger Generation 1 technically began development in the very early 90s, so while well, it took something like five or six years to make it, by which time the Nintendo 64 was out, when they started making it, the Super Nintendo was still the newest console. And of course, on the TV, you have Stand By Me play. So, we're gonna go outside. And we're gonna go up here. Professor Oak shows up. As you can see, the ability to just have the text display almost instantly makes things a lot faster. <laughs> yeah, in this, in this playthrough, I think I can see why the rival has a chip on his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so we need to go and pick our starter. Now, of course, this being the green team, the choice is pretty much made for us. If you thought we were picking Bulbasaur, you're correct. And we're actually not going to nickname our Pokémon this run, because one thing that isn't changed is how Pokémon are displayed in the PC. So if I need to box something, it's going to be a lot more difficult to keep track of things. So, no nicknames this time. So, now, we have our first battle. Yeah, unfortunately, NPCs still walk as slowly as ever. And we're just gonna spam. You know, if he'd spam tackle, he probably would have beaten me. Yeah, he did. Should have gone green, dude. Anyways, with that's done, we're going to go back home, and we're going to heal our Pokémon real quick before we run our first errands. So, of course, now we get on the Route 1. And I think we're actually going to battle some wild Pokemon just to level up a little bit. So, uh, I guess we'll just skip ahead a bit. Okay, we're up to level 9 now. I think we can move on. We talk to this guy, and we get a free potion. What do we get this time? It's a rat! So, let's move on. Oops. And now we reach Viridian City. So first we're gonna heal up. And next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go here to the Pokemon Mart. And once again, I can't escape my true calling in life. I'm the motherfucking mailman. So, this kid right here, um, you'll see him more later in the game. He's a TM pirate. This is how you get most TMs to be reusable. You can just buy it from him. Now you may ask, well, how do you do that if you can't, you know, rebattle trainers? There is one place where you can rebattle trainers. We'll get to that later. But that comes way later in the game. We're talking about the midpoint. Now we're just going to go down here and deliver this package. Custom Pokeball. So we're assuming this is probably a Master Ball or something like that. Actually, there's another ball. It could be the Hyper Ball. Not to be confused with the Ultra Ball, which is called the Hyper Ball in Japanese. There is a Hyper Ball in this game, but it does something else. 
We'll talk about that more when I actually get one. Say what you will, you can't unfuck your sister. That sounded better in my head. God damn it. I was trying to make a joke saying, you know, like, I fucked your sister. Just whatever. God damn it. Oh, uh, well, we'll talk about what I was about to say after we take out this bird. Anyways, uh, the Pokemon, the map is integrated into the Pokedex. So it doesn't take up a slot in your item bag. Which is good, um, because you do have limited space. Although, this hack increases the size of your bag from 20 slots to 30. And we're actually going to gain a couple more levels before we move on. Because I am going to take on the optional rival battle. But first, I want to go and do a couple things. Heal. And now we gotta go over here, and we're gonna get ourselves some Pokeballs, because in this game, you don't get three Pokeballs. At the start, like you do in a lot of later games. We're gonna get 15 of them. Because in this game, you, you really do want to get as many Pokemon as you can, because there's a very useful item you can get later on. But only if you have something like... What is it? I think it's 60 Pokemon registered in the Pokedex. So this is the trainer school, and the main school is actually in the basement. Um, there's some pretty funny shit that happens if you talk to the various NPCs. I'm not going to spoil it for you. So, but you really should talk to some of the students. It's it's pretty amusing. There's a lot of fun Easter eggs in this game like that. But we need to talk to this guy. Quite chuffed. Quite chuffed. What? What? Yeah, he's very British. Can't you tell? Now, the move decks is very useful in this game because a lot of moves had their effects changed um, compared to vanilla. In fact, some moves were replaced entirely. And this is your only way to know, in-game, what those different moves do. Whenever a move is used for the first time in battle, you get it registered in the move decks. So, quiz. Grass, duh. Quick attack. That would be a burn. In later generations, this is not true. I believe Gen... was it Gen 8 or Gen 9 that removed that? And that's going to be Tri-Attack, which normally is just a normal type attack, but in this hack, it is a combination type move that is counted as a Fire, Electric, and Ice attack all at once, which makes it, in my opinion, pretty fucking overpowered. And Water Gun, because of the same type attack bonus. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the move deck. So you press start in the Pokedex, and there you go. So we have a few moves registered already. Anyways, I'm going to cut ahead because I'm going to cast some Pokemon off screen and do a little bit more level grinding. Give me a second. Oh, by the way, you can find Eevee on Route 1 if you want it. Which I do, just for the Pokedex. Can't use it, and none of the Eevee illusions available in this game are the right color palette, so. Yeah. But, you want an early Eevee? Well, just cast three of them here and then just use Evolutionary Stones. In fact, you can find most of them on the ground before you go to Rock Tunnel, I think. I know where at least one or two of them are. Anyways, skipping ahead again. Oh, another thing I just remembered. Go up here. You can get a hit point up.
And now we're going to go over this way. Damn it! Get in the damn ball, you piece of shit! And now up here, we get ourselves three potions! I believe that feature was added in Generation 6 originally, where you can get multiple items in one pickup. Anyways, I'm gonna go back and deposit the Pokemon I caught in the PC. Oh, and one more thing before we battle the rival. Let's go down here real quick. Because over here, we get ourselves a protein. We're gonna use both of these on Bulbasaur, because there's no reason not to use as many of these stat boosting items as you can. Because, uh, well, it doesn't really matter. Unlike in the in later games where you have to worry about effort values, you have what's called stat experience in these games. It's it's a little complicated. I'm not gonna get into detail. Now we move on to take on. Um, well, asshole. If I really wanted to stall on him, I could have evolved my starter before fighting him, but I don't need to. So you'll notice one difference here is instead of starting with a Pidgey, he starts off with a Meowth, which you can catch on this route. We're just going to spam Growl, because you won't be able to hurt me. Yeah, Bulbasaur is kind of broken compared to the other starters. In fact, in competitive play, Venusaur is considered the best pick. Compared to Charizard, which is frankly kind of shit. And Blastoise, which... It's a bulky water type, but the problem is there's a bunch of bulky water types in Gen 1, and... Frankly, Lapras just does it better. See ya, asshole. Anyways, uh, let me see, how long have I been recording for? Okay, we've been going for about 22 minutes. But you know what? I might as well evolve Bulbasaur while I'm at it, so... This will just be really quick. I'm gonna skip ahead. And now we hit level 16, it's ready to evolve. And I think that's gonna wrap it up, ladies and gentlemen. If you like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, check out my Rumble page. Rumble, rather. Ah, so tongue-tied right now. Anyways, I'll see you all next time.